Hello YouTube, this is kind of an amended video to my last video in which we solved a trig function that was very, very similar to this one, uh, in which we have two different types of trig functions, which is really undesirable. We'd like to have just one type of trig function so that we could just factor or, uh, or isolate the trig function and work from there. But essentially you'll notice here that we have a sine squared and a cosine of x, and, uh, and so we have to work from this. So we say solve this for x. Uh, in order to deal with a situation like this in which we have a sine squared and we also have a cosine of x, what we're going to do is try to work a trig substitution in here with common trig identities in order to make this one type of trig function. So as per my last suggestion in my last video, if you're dealing with a squared trig function, one convenient type of trig substitution we can always use is a Pythagorean substitution. So recall that uh, this is the most, the most, I'd say, popular one. I don't know if that's really quite the way to put it, but sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, okay? And this is very convenient because what this allows us to do is, well, we can isolate sine squared x in this equation, and, and basically this would imply that then sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x, which implies that wherever we say sine squared of x, we can insert, insert or substitute 1 minus cosine squared of x. And uh, that would be a very, very convenient substitution in this equation uh, because then we'd be in all in terms of cosine. So that's going to be our method here to isolate or, sorry, to, to get rid of all other trig functions but one of them. So we say 2 times uh, 1 minus cosine squared of x as a Pythagorean substitution plus 2 times cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. So now we're going to clean this up a little bit here. We'll go ahead and distribute our 2. So we get 2 minus 2 cosine squared of x. This is plus 2 cosine of x minus 1 equal to 0. And then we can combine our, our constants here. And so we end up with the grand total of negative 2 of these cosine squareds uh, plus 2 cosine x. And this would be plus 1 equals 0. And then as a matter of convenience here, we're going to try to factor this. So what we'll do is we will... Um, multiply everything by a negative 1, which in essence makes this positive 2 cosine squared of x minus 2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. So our primary method of solving something that's quadratic, or at least in quadratic form like this, would be to try to factor it. So we say, okay, so factor of two binomials set equal to 0, we could set each factor equal to 0. So let's go ahead and try to factor this. Uh, up front, we're going to put a 2 cosine of x and uh, over here, a cosine of x. So multiplying those would definitely give us our 2 cosine squared of x. So now we need to produce a negative 1 here. So we could say, well, possibly it's, it's positive 1 minus 1. And checking this, you notice that your outer and your inner, you get negative 2 cosines, negative 2 cosines, and a positive cosine on your inner here, which basically sums up to be negative cosine of x which is not good because that is not what we have here in the middle, which is negative 2 cosine of x. And you would not, you maybe notice here that even if you switch your positive 1 and negative 1 around in your factors, uh, it still doesn't give you a negative 2 cosine x in the middle. So what this means is this is not factorable, and because it is not factorable, we're going to have to rely upon, recall that when you have a quadratic, a quadratic thing uh, equal to 0, in order to solve this, we're going to have to use quadratic formula if it's not factorable. So let's go ahead and list that real quick here. We say x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And in this case, instead of having an x here and here, you'll notice that we have cosines. So we're going to use our quadratic formula. Let's start by identifying our a, our b, and our c. So you'll notice here that uh, with with 2 cosine squared x minus 2 cosine of x minus 1 equal to 0, that we have uh, an a value of 2, a b value of negative 2, and a c value of negative 1. So in other words, we've got a is 2, b is negative 2, and c is negative 1. So we're going to put this into our quadratic formula over here, and we get this. We say, well, then cosine of x, not just x, but cosine of x, is equal to negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4 times a times c. And this is all over 2 times a. So inserting what we have here, we have b was negative 2, so negative 2, negative 2. a was 2, 2 and 2. 
and then C was negative 1. So working this out, we get then cosine of x has to be equal to negative negative 2 or 2 plus or minus. So now we're going to do some math here. We say negative 2 squared is 4. This is a negative 4 times a negative, or sorry, a negative 4 times a positive 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 1 is 8. So we say plus 8 is all over 4. So as a matter of convenience, what we want to do here is um, get a decimal for this. So this was, uh, you know, we have 2 plus radical 12 over 4. We also have 2 minus, minus radical 12 over 4. So in order to get a decimal here, let's go ahead and pull out a calculator. So we say 2 plus, 2 plus radical 12. Okay, enter. And we'll split this four ways. So divided by 4. Okay, so there's our first decimal. Then we say, uh, let's do this all in parentheses, 2 minus radical 12 divided by 4. So we get, uh, you know, 1.3660 and negative 0.3660. So let's head back over here. So essentially, what we determined was that cosine of x equals 1.3660 and negative 0 0.3660. So in order to solve this, we're actually going to take uh, cosine inverse of both sides of this equation. So that would cancel this out. We get x equal, we have to do cosine inverse now of everything on the right, both of these. So, so cosine inverse, cosine inverse. And so what we get is this. We get cosine inverse of 1.3660 is one set of solutions, and then uh, cosine inverse of negative 0 0.3660. And so let's go ahead and confront this first one here. Cosine inverse of anything greater than 1 or anything less than negative 1 is not going to exist. Uh, because recall that, you know, like for example in the unit circle, you know, which is of radius 1, cosine values are represented by x values. We can show this by looking at the unit circle here. Uh, and you'll notice that since the radius of the unit circle is 1, you're never going to obtain a cosine or an x value that is greater than 1 or less than negative 1. Okay? Uh, so, so this first one here just simply has no solutions. None. Null set. And so we say the second one here, uh, if we did cosine inverse of negative 0 0.3660, let's go ahead and do this. We say, okay, so cosine, our cosine of negative 0 0.3660 we get about 111.46, um, 111.46, okay, so let's go ahead and sketch a picture of what this would look like. So 111.46, which is roughly 21 degrees-ish, 21 degrees, here's our 111-ish, it's about 21 degrees past 90, which leaves us this reference angle here be about uh, 69 degrees ish. So now we say, all right, so cosine came out to be a negative 0 0.3660. That gives us a reference angle of about 69 degrees. The only reason I bring up the reference angle here is because one of our angles truly is, in this instance, all students state calculus, this 111 degrees. But we also need another angle down here that also had a reference angle of 69 degrees but is also in standard position. So we say this angle 180 plus another 69, that'd be 249 degrees. So we say in this instance, we say cosine, or sorry, theta is equal to 111-ish degrees and 249-ish degrees using the quadratic formula. Cheers.